So for sure, like free soloing is just incredible. He is the future, and like you are just holding on to almost nothing. You think you're gonna be the one who send it? Or? No way. No. I oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
I used to say like the intro of the XX is just the uh, okay. like, instrumental music, yeah. but I really like quite a lot of like the old school classic yeah. rock or whatever. Yeah. I'm not very picky. When do you think the next ascent of silence will be and by who? My guess is in two years. Two years. Mm -hmm. By who? Could be Stefano. Stefano, okay. Mm -hmm. I, I guess it's either Stefano or Seb, right? Or Jakob. Or Jakob, yeah. Maybe he gets motivated. Yeah. There is for sure in the end, I think the new beta for the end of the crux is slightly better. Okay. Um, and let's see, yeah. If you could send any route in the world you haven't already, which would you pick and why? The one that I feel that is probably impossible for me, yeah. um, which is probably Excalibur. Excalibur, okay. Wow. 9B plus in our goal. I already yeah. put quite a lot of effort into it and there is just like one move on the two finger pocket yeah. which I find it like specifically really hard. Looks, I can do it in isolation, but like sending from the ground feels like ah. Yeah. It looks very bouldery that one, but uh, it's like short power endurance. Okay. In the end, like doing the individual moves is fine, but yeah. the route adds up, even though it's only like 15 moves. Okay. Yeah. How long until the next 10A, and who do you think will be to send that one? So I think if we follow the progression of the past couple of years. Yeah. I think it's logical that the next 10A is in 15 years. 15. Do you think you're going to be the one who send it? Or? No way. No? I, I will never ever climb a 10A, <laughs> for sure. How about your son? I mean, he's going to be what? Like uh, 17 yeah, then? Yeah. Yeah? You think? <laughs> Do you see some potential there? He's too little for me to, <laughs> to be able to tell. What is your biggest weakness in climbing? The triceps. Toe hooks. Tricep and toe hooks, okay. And obviously like the explosive power in the yeah. in the hands, but that's something for me, like specifically for the rock climbing. Yeah. That's not what stops me from like sending 90 plus. You I know? didn't expect it to be toe hooks though. Especially the toe hook on silence. I mean that's more jam. But yeah, that's jam. That's it's jam, yeah. Zero toe hooking. Yeah, okay. So you're what do you think makes you bad at toe hooks though? My core is not the, the strongest, ah, okay. but I think it's also the power in the toes in this direction. Yeah, can you do a front lever? It's quite hard for me. It's hard? Yeah. yeah. Do you have any isolation uh, rituals before competitions? What do you do in isolation? Almost like pretending that it's not a cone. Okay. It's oh, a wow. nice, you know, opportunity to yeah. talk to the other climbers, yeah. friends that you haven't seen for a long time, and then really focus only the short time before you actually start yeah. climbing. But well, that is so much easier said than done though, right? Yeah, to absolutely. To lock that out and try pretend like it's not a competition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, no, I, I remember I always kind of enjoyed a little bit the, the isolation because it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a time where you can talk to o people. Also like many years ago it was different because sometimes you would really spend long hours. Yeah. Now it's not really true anymore. Uh, what is the best bit about climbing? It's impossible for me to pick up one yeah. because there are so many components which make climbing so interesting for me. Yeah. So I can't really pick one. Yeah. I love like being there on the rock high above the ground and yeah. also knowing that it is a, an amazing place yeah. with the best view and like you are just holding on to almost nothing and yeah, like yeah. also knowing like not so many people can get to that place. Yeah. I think it is connected with some kind of feeling of the freedom which yeah. I don't really get to experience anywhere else but yeah. it's so much more. Yeah. Also the traveling, seeing new places, getting to know new people. I also like, I love training, I love trying hard. Yeah. There's just so much. Right. Greatest non-climbing achievement. <laughs> <laughs> Hugo, having a kid? Uh, yeah. Where do you draw the line in terms of something being too dangerous? It's very individual. Yeah. I think it depends on the situation. So, so for sure, like free soling, a harder route for me is way too. What is a hard route though? Anything harder than six A. Harder than six A. You hear that, guys? Uh, Adam Andro said that har harder than six A. That's hard. He considers that hard. <laughs> What's your 
sketchy as climb. Probably some trad climb, right? Yeah, yeah. It, it, like some of the very early tread climbs I did, for yeah. example, back in Norway, when I had almost oh, really? zero experience in tread climbing. What were those? Uh, so well, while we were filming the movie Change yeah. with Peter Pavlicek, we went to Hamaroy. Yeah. They showed us some totally virgin cliff, and I <laughs> okay. just quested up the two completely new lines, oh, like ground up. Yeah. I think the first one was like 7A, and the other one was maybe. But with like loose 70. rock and it was a little bit loose, and I had very weak concept, like yeah. conception if like that gear is good or uh, not. Okay, right. so, yeah. Then on the on the second climb, I actually broke a little bit, uh, like little hold. Yeah. I ripped like a really tiny piece, and I landed with my butt on the ground from like four meters. Yeah. Uh, but then I decided to go for it, and I did it. But no, I wasn't. <laughs> It almost felt like I shouldn't be doing it. So it was more the lack of experience. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't yeah, really yeah. that dangerous, but more like, okay. Even uh, though, like, there are other dangerous climbs where I was, like, afraid, but yeah. it was almost, always I had the feeling, like, it was worth it. Yeah. And okay. I'm not saying that it was, like, under control, but it was just, like, that moment where I thought, like, yeah, this is... And the, this is a little bit dangerous, but it's an adventure that is worth going for it. Yeah. Okay. But what I feel is like the difference most of mostly when you're with the rope, then they're always just like a short sections where yeah. you're feeling like, okay, now I'm basically free soloing. <laughs> yeah. I could deck. Yeah. Whereas like if you're free soloing, you're exposed to fatal danger yeah. the whole length of the climb. Yeah. What is one comp you would want to relive? World Championships in Paris 2016. Yeah. And topping out the final route on the lead yeah. portion. Uh, yeah, that, that, was... that is by far the best competition experience yeah. I've ever had. Is that in Bercy? Sure. Yes. Yeah. You can only do one or the other for the rest of your life. Lead climbing or bouldering? Lead climbing. Lead climbing, yeah. What kind of routes and boulder palms would you like to see more of in climbing competitions? Crack climbing. Crack climbing? Mm -hmm. All right, yeah. I, I guess a lot of people would disagree. I know Jakob Schubert would definitely disagree. <laughs> no, no, no. Apart from that, I think I'm quite a good climber. Yeah. I think it's quite fun to watch. Crack climbing, yeah. Because you really get to fight. Yeah, that is true. You are somehow like squeezed inside the crack, and it's kind of hard to fall off, but it's hard to progress. I think you would need more climbing time, though, because it takes basically like yeah. two minutes to climb a crack boulder. Yeah. But uh, yeah, who is your favorite climber to climb with? Mm. Stefano Bisolfi. Yeah. We why why do you think that America. is? Is it because you're pushing each other well, or? Yeah, yeah. We speak in Italian, which is yeah. my favorite, favorite like, language. <laughs> yeah. Is it your favorite? <laughs> I think yeah. so. Yeah. All right. And he lives in Arco, which is my favorite place to be. Yeah. All right, one piece of advice for young, new climbers. It's really hard to pick one because it really depends on like what level you're climbing at. Yeah. So what I often say, like just more focus on on sighting, more focus on the volume. Yeah. But let's say if you're already climbing 8B and 8C, maybe that's not the best advice. Yeah. And maybe, okay, I, I say focus on the technique, but yes, then there are climbers that are actually climbing 7A and 7B, yeah. and it's like their physical limit. They are climbing exceptionally technically well, yeah. and all they are missing is more or less the power. Yeah. But I would say, nowadays, if you go and see the people in the gyms, I think it's rather the opposite. That people have too much power and yeah, yeah, not yeah. enough technique. Okay, so the last question. If you could only climb in one crag for the rest of your life, where would you climb? Staying in one crag for a long time sucks anyway. <laughs> yeah. So, so you want to choose be, a big. So it would be a crag which is big yeah. and has a lot of variety of climbing, yeah. which for me is Arco. Okay, nice. You yeah. have lots of variety there. Yeah. So for example, like I really love Flatanger. Yeah. But climbing in Flatanger is relatively monotonous. Yeah. And it's always the same intro yeah, yeah, yeah. still. Yeah. 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 So I think that was all the questions. Uh, make sure that you check out Adam's new course on lead climbing at altitudeclimbing.com. See you guys next time. <laughs>